Hey everyone, welcome to the Unconnoisseur. My name is Matt. And I'm Drew. We're glad you're here today with us. Absolutely. All right, let's get started. Where where do we start? Well, how, about, how was your I, week? How was your I, week in music? I, what what do you think? You know, my week was pretty fun as uh as we're listening to a couple of different albums this week, uh, both what we're currently doing and uh what we're sitting here recording today. Going back over uh, Burn. Man, this album was so much fun. <laughs> it is a, I, it, I actually forgot how much fun this album is. I, I, I was reminded last night as I was getting ready for bed, thinking, you know, let's listen to this album. Just this next 45 minutes, turn it on. I turned it on. I thought, nope, I'll never sleep after listening to this. <laughs> that was just fun. Yeah. Uh, but but my, my week outside of music, listening to it and, and playing it and having fun with it, Life's just been busy around here. Yeah, it really yeah. has. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure for you too. We've had a, a lot going, Lily's basketball stuff going on and uh bike shop recording. I've been doing some photo shoots, so it's been hustle 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 around here. Yeah. Uh we're out of that uh, freeze warning for for now. I mean, I kind of laugh when it hit 40 degrees here. It felt like uh the North Pole for Austin, Texas, but uh but we're doing good. What about yeah. you? What's your week well, in music and week in life look like? You know, it's weird because, um, uh, well, I, I signed up for the Unconnoisseur on TikTok. So I've done a couple of my own um, TikTok videos, and I'm brand new to doing videos on TikTok. I am not new to TikTok whatsoever. Um, but if you'd like to follow me at the Unconnoisseur on TikTok, um, I just do like 15-second videos nothing too intense um just about what i'm listening to or the journey that we're on um you know i pre-recorded a couple so that i can at least get one a day out that's that's my goal is to get one video a day out at uh, on tiktok but the, the weekend music for me was awesome um this morning uh before we started recording uh, i just wanted a little bit of stan kenton in my ears and so mm. i put on the uh the the double feature with the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire Jazz uh, Ensemble and the Stan, uh, the Stan Kenton Orchestra. So I had a little bit of big band in my ear this morning. Also, of course, uh, Sons of Kemet uh, was playing um, while I was doing some other stuff, playing in the background. I, I dove deep into it yesterday after uh, after uh, I was done watching TV. But, <laughs> but it's funny because, I don't know, you can see my shirt. Uh, I, I'm still a okay. huge Need to Breathe fan. I always will be. I love Need to Breathe, but um, so I, I did a couple of I did a couple of hours of Need to Breathe this week, just <laughs> just to, <laughs> um, just to take a little break. But I, I'll tell you, this, this journey is going to be so much fun. There's so much oh, yeah. to talk about. I can't wait to you know just kind of start talking of all the music that I listen to. Mm. I, I don't want to give too much away, but man, I, I did I. I, I did a lot of music this week. I'm just kind of going through my recently played uh, playlist on my iPhone. I do all my music on the iPhone. I know you do your music on Google Music, and so you can probably see your your played history oh, yeah. as well. We just want to remind everyone that we are not here to criticize anyone's work. These The, the views that you're going to hear are strictly our own opinions about the music. Um, you know... When Kendra and I were younger, uh, we lived in, in around Nashville in Clarksville, Tennessee, and, and we sold art. Uh, we did home, home art sales. And while we were learning that process, our instructor always told us, you know, start, the, start your show, start your thing with uh, that you don't want to hear any yucks or any blucks or any, I don't like that, from any of your, you know, guests. Because what some people don't like other people are going to like so i think that's really important for us on our journey here we're going to try not to um discourage you from liking what we like or what we don't like you know just because we don't like it or just because i don't like it doesn't mean drew's not going to like it uh it doesn't mean that you're not going to like it i've got my own opinion um so we're not here to criticize the artist or the work we're just kind of um yeah, we're just kind of going on, on on our own personal tastes. And I think that's important for everyone to remember. Um, 
you know, if uh, if Shabaka watches our YouTube video and and you know we slam it or if we don't slam it, I don't know. We'll, we'll get there today, but um, I, I don't want Shabaka coming after me and saying, "Hey, man, uh, you play, you you do it." You know, you know what I mean. That that's what I'm getting at. Most no. of all. Right, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I know that for sure. <laughs> Heck no. But I, but I can enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. I can enjoy it or not enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I think that's you're you're right on with that. I'm I'm always reminded it is an opinion. I have those conversations now about jazz music, and and people will let me know, uh, so and so this that or the other, or I've got stories about him or. Uh, that person or whatever it is, everybody has an opinion on it that, that has been listening to jazz before. Uh, and I'm new. Yeah. Don't, don't take my view on it. I want to, I want to appreciate it for myself or, um, I want to, I want to dig into bitches brew and wonder why so many (laughs) jazz musicians wouldn't call it jazz music. Uh, but I, I I don't know. Right. (laughs) Right. Well, and that's why we're the unconnoisseurs, you know, uh, the definition of a connoisseur is an expert on something. And man, I, I, I feel like I don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room when it comes to jazz. Yeah. I, I want to continually be learning. I want to, I want to be that unconnoisseur, hopefully for the rest of my very long life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't always want to be the smartest guy in the room. Uh, and especially not with jazz. I want the smart guys to tell me something about it. <laughs> right. Right. And, and there are a lot, a lot of them out there. <laughs> there sure but are. It, it is our opinion and i i think about that a lot what what my opinion on this album might be uh versus somebody else uh is huge and and i think that goes with a lot of other things uh watching the referees at the basketball games uh high school uh, jv and varsity girls basketball boy those parents sure do know how to ref a game Mm-hmm. But they're not ever going to stand out on that court and try to make those calls because they're horrified mm-hmm. to make the wrong call. And so I kind of wonder if they'll just keep their pie hole shut. Wouldn't <laughs> life be a little easier? Um, and and for the most part, <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I was one of those parents. I, I watched Delaney play for uh, four years, going through well more than four years actually, but four two travel years and two high school years man oh man i was one of those parents <laughs> <laughs> and i'm glad i'm not a ref i don't ever want that, oh, that yeah. kind of verbal abuse oh, yeah. it's bad enough being on the scoreboard and listening to the 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 uh, coaches on either side uh but i i think that's it everybody has their opinion everybody's going to give it and i think they should uh whether i agree or don't agree um, I still need to hear it. So the comments below are the place for that on, on all of our channels. Um, and then you started TikTok. Every yep. time I think about TikTok, I think about TikTok dancer, background dancers. Background just need dancers. some of that. Are you going to dance for us? <laughs> no, I'm not going to dance. No, 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 no. <laughs> you going to play it low D? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I will get that uh, Instagram going at some point in time. All right, uh, good. Fortunately, now it, I got about a week or so. Yeah. And I, I think for that, just the information of, of who we're listening to, it's it's weird timing to me that we're we're listening to the album this week that we are and shifting back. There's so much education, so much learning that's taken place in 45 weeks already that uh, looking back is fun. I, and I do appreciate this, this opportunity, but it's also hard because mm-hmm. where I was on album 99 was completely 100% clueless. Yep. And, and now we're on album 58 and I would agree that I'm still 99% clueless. Um, but yeah, I've but, gained some, knowledge. Oh, we've got, that one percent of knowledge now i, I got one one percent <laughs> yeah I, I at least know what i was gonna say i know what jazz is but i don't that's the golden <laughs> question right there what is it really yeah. well we got weeks to come uh i i have to yeah yes because we are on week 58 i i have to remind myself constantly that this is a, a marathon and not a sprint it is it's a it's a straw and not a fire hose. I can I can sip or I can guzzle as much as I want or as little as I need to, I guess. But um, 
yeah, it, it's it's interesting yeah. being where we are and and coming back to to what we're going to talk about today, where how far we've come and yeah, I agree. It's interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, finish what you were saying. Nope. That that touches right there. That is it. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's fun in and of itself. So uh, enough of that. The, the life has been good. And I, I think that in these earlier weeks, we got into as much just about, um, I think about boxing, the sweet science. Uh, you get into the ring and you throw a couple of jabs and you start to dance around. You're trying to feel out the opponent. And I, I don't say that we're boxers by any means, but I think that the idea is we're just kind of feeling around. When we were first talking, this was, hey, what's going on in your world? Uh, sometimes it would be just life in general. We'd spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes just talking about how we got to where we're at and oh, the music. Oh, yeah, by the way, the music. We, we forgot to talk about the music. Um, and I think that's kind of the fun part is we don't have the notes from that. And I think that in the next weeks... I'll try to record our phone calls because it is hysterical on many occasions <laughs> what we end up talking about. And I, and I think I want to keep it that way too. I mean, here we are 10 minutes into this and we haven't even discussed the album really. I mean, you yeah. saw the slideshow and you heard a little bit of inner Babylon, but <laughs> and it's been more Drew's babbling on. <laughs> so, uh, All but right, you want to talk? You want to talk about this week's album? I do. Okay. I I think it's it's time to do that. Uh, this is Sons of Kemet, and the album title was Burn. Yeah. Um, you'll probably have your notes in front of you, and I've got some handwritten stuff. But this is one of those interesting albums from this group it was their first album uh over i think 2011 to 2022 they were actually performing and had recorded multiple albums uh they had won the mobo award uh for this particular album uh the thing that i man the thing i appreciated about it most is the tuba yeah. when you hear that tuba it it's your bass line yep. and it's used as a lead instrument um Oren, uh, I'll look, I'll find his name here in just a minute. He was only on the album. Uh, he was the tuba player on this album. And then they changed tuba players after that. Uh, I saw the other day he's doing some education stuff as well as breathing exercise for tuba players. And that it was noted as an electric tuba as well. So I want to find out what an electric tuba is. Because I know blowing that tuba, it sure took the wind out of me. Oh, man, for sure. Or, uh, oh, uh, Orient Marshall. I, yeah, um, I don't think I've ever heard of an electric tuba. So I'm going to dig into that one. Uh, nice. This actually was released in 2013. Uh, and it <laughs> its reviews were all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the, the thing that hit me the most was uh, by... Uh, Mike Hobart uh, reviewed it. He's with Financial Times. That was a weird, weird magazine to <laughs> review a jazz album, but um, delivered insidious riffs, intriguing textures, and a whopping beat. And I thought, well, that's a good way to sum that whole thing up because <laughs> it sure was. It. Yeah. Uh, their take on a lot of things was interesting, but uh, I did I did a little bit more work. Uh, what did what did you look into on the album? I know that you probably wikied it and Googled well, yeah, it. I, I've got the wiki pulled up, and I'm just going to talk about the genres that are listed on the wiki page. And obviously, the first genre is, is jazz. Um, yeah. The second genre is Afrobeat, and you know if you spend if you spend forty five. 59 minutes, whatever the album is listening, you, you do get some, some real, um, non classical jazz, uh, beats. Um, the other genre that's listed is world. Um, I can kind of see that. Uh, and I'll talk just a little more about that in a minute, but the avant-garde jazz, uh, was the other genre that's listed. And, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I, I have my, my opinions about avant-garde, and, and, and I'd be happy to talk about those, but we've got some avant-garde coming up in the future that 
that you'll <laughs> that you'll hear both of us uh, grind on a little bit. Some of the notes of my own personal listing that I made this week. I absolutely love the melodies that are that are picked out. The the melodies that are written um, on this album. I, I I love them. I mean, he, he writes the melodies very very well, and I and I like the voicings, the the way that the the sax and the tuba work together, or the clarinet because Shabaka plays both the the tenor sax and the clarinet um, on this album, and and I just love the way that they're voiced, the way that um, that they that they come out uh, together. I thought it was interesting that they do use two drummers. Uh, the band yeah. has dual drummers laying down beats, and you can totally—I mean, you can—you can totally hear that when you when you listen to the album. Um, and like you said, the tuba for me—that's that's rock solid in this, and it makes it all work. And and um, I don't know. Did you have any favorite songs off the album? It was funny because uh, you had mentioned one that. I looked down at my list of things and I was like, yeah, that's uh, it. It was weird. I think half the album has gotten my favorite, favorite track on it. Uh, I just the intro. Uh, when you think about all the first uh, track is all will surely burn mm -hmm. and it comes out just swinging, uh, oh, yeah. not jazz swinging, but it, it comes out with those Afro beats. It comes out with, uh, some real serious drama and, and, and energy, uh, the energy put into it. And then inner Babylon, yeah. um, I was telling you right before we hit record that that was one of the songs I sat down with the trumpet, and tried to figure out how to, how to play it. What caught me even again, last night, listening to the album is the melodies throughout the entire song, the, throughout the entire album. Uh, you can find them, you can whistle to them, you can bop your head to them, and they stay with you. So yeah. I, I think that the, the what's that fancy term, melodic structures of all the terms, uh, wow, of all the tunes, it. Yeah. It, it's something that sticks with you. Uh, so Inner Babylon, going home, just a, it's notated here, uh, and then beware. Uh, which yeah. is number eight. I was like, oh yeah, so I got I got four favorites on that album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I noted I noted three favorites myself, and Inner Babylon was number th song number three was was a favorite of mine. Um, I like the Book of Disquiet. Um, mm. That's song number four. Yep, uh, it's it's a different style than the rest. Well, not a different style. It's in the same style, but a different um, feel, I guess. Uh, from the rest of the album, it's a, it's a little quieter, um, and then going home. I, I love the uh, I love the sound, the melody coming through on the sac uh, on the uh, clarinet. It's, uh, it, it's definitely one of my favorites. The uh, Rivers of Babylon. That's an old old tune, made fresh. Uh, it took me a third listening to this morning. I, I guess I wasn't paying attention. Rivers of Babylon starts out with this clarinet. Uh, my first take this morning, taking Lily to school, I thought it was a violin of some sort. I was like, this is a weird, she got out of the car and I went back to that, uh, that song rivers of Babylon. And it is an old classic. Uh, I don't know how to def define that. It's an older tune, yeah. uh, redone by them. Um, but I noted something going through the album and I, I know that in weeks to come, we wind up talking about this as we record this, but we've talked about it months ago. One of the most important things I've noticed on this album is if you just grab a song and listen to it, it's okay. But if you do really enjoy that whole hour of music from beginning to end, you hear that it's not just individual songs, but it kind of seems together exactly what... I would expect it's it's a story, it's a movement, it's uh, ten uh, ten different acts, if you will, of a play coming out. It was it was one of the many albums that I enjoy from beginning to end to listen to, mm -hmm. and I I think that's what stood out. And so it was hard to pick a particular song. Ooh, that's my that's my go to song for that. Uh, but they were all kind of really just good together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And like you said, I, I may listen to music 
or I, I may do this a little differently than you do because that's what I do. Like I'll put song number one on and just listen to the whole album all the way through. I, and I know kids today, they, they, they don't do that. I mean, my, my own kids, you know, they've got their kind of favorite artist, but I think they've got their favorite song and then that's all they listen to by that artist. And that's why I think this journey is important, not only for me, but for anyone interested in jazz, it's going to, it's going to expand what you're willing to listen to and how much time you're willing to invest in music or listening to music. It's a, it's a valid point. Uh, it will, it, it does consume you, right? I mean, if I, if I really think about it, it consumes you. You sit down and you start to listen to an album and next thing you know, it's like, wow, an hour of my life has passed away. Uh, or it's uh, eight kindred spirits from Charles <laughs> Lloyd that takes you to another world. Yeah. Um, sorry, that was a side note for later <laughs> months to come. But but that's that album listening. It, it's a commitment. Um, and I know that I've heard it many, many times again. If you want to be better than uh, anybody in a particular uh, sport or particular job, uh, 18 minutes a day and you'll be better than what 85% of the population at that thing. And I think about that with these weeks of just listening to an album, I'm going to be a really great jazz music listener <laughs> after all of this. I may not be good with anything else, but I'm going to be really good at listening to the radio. Yeah. That was dad. Yeah, well, and you know, again, I think we talked a little bit about it last week. Um, the reason that we're on this journey is just because we were both kind of fed up with where we were with the music that we were listening to. We were kind of stuck in rut. And so this this album especially gets us out of that rut that we were in. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with the music that you listen to. But I was just stuck, myself personally, I was just stuck in a rut. Uh, you can only listen to Living on a Prayer so many times. And... <laughs> Um, not that it's not a great song it is but man um, yeah it, it's this week kind of overtook me with uh, with Sons of Kemet it really really did a lot of energy to it yeah there's an awful lot of energy to it yeah uh, that's what I I, I think about uh, Keaton and listening to Tool <laughs> uh, used to listen to that a lot when when uh, working out in the MMA gym and Tool would come on and the energy the excitement boy you pound on a heavy bag for hours listening to that kind of energetic music yeah that was sons kemet and burn um <laughs> the energy that came through there you ha you had to be careful listening to it at night <laughs> that's right the adrenaline might be rushing too much you're thinking wow how come i'm still up at 2 a.m I, I didn't do anything crazy and i just can't go to bed i'm laying here thinking oh my word what happened yeah sons of kemet happened sons of kemet did happen it, it I, and I do like the energy on the album. I mean, um, yeah, it's not uh, it's not a, a fall asleep before you know listen to before you go to bed fall asleep, but, um, but uh, they're very energetic. That's for sure. Um, one thing that's that I'm looking at, I, I did not find anything in the Penguin Guide to Jazz, the version that I have. I didn't find anything on Sons of Kemet, so I was a little confused about that. Why it wasn't in my um, Penguin hmm. Guide to Jazz? So, you know what. That we're going with the discussion that that, yeah. that we're on, and and I like it. Um, they their albums they they used two different labels, the Naim label and the Impulse label. And this very first album came out on the Naim label. <clears throat> That's something that I wish I would have gone a little bit deeper into. Maybe why they changed labels or why um, why they switched right after the first one because the other two albums are are on the Impulse label. What do you think? I'd say I, I hadn't even looked at that. I wonder if uh, there were connections with a couple of the artists that were there or uh, looking into this. I wonder if maybe Shabaka had uh, wanted more freedom or uh, they had better control. I think that we look at that from the past with other, other musicians in general. Uh, you could bet either a, it was going to be more money going to a different label or less money, but more creative freedoms. 
Oh. Uh, I can't imagine that they had any any need for any additional creative freedom after an album like that. Uh, they took kind of all man. I I kind of want the music played in the background just so I can be like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. They they took a lot of liberties out there. Uh, and I know that the slideshow or some of the pictures I've got, we show the other tuba player and the other drummers that are there. Is that too loud? Bring it up a little closer. How's that? Go to the front of the mic. There you go. All right, so keep, yeah, just, yeah, let's just keep talking. I'll let this play yeah. for a few minutes. There's... <laughs> <laughs> Listening to this album again, man, it, it took me to a place where I... It it is that rabbit hole of things, and it is weird to go back to this. I wouldn't have had this conversation on number ninety nine. Mm -hmm. uh, the melodies that that are produced out there, the excitement, the, the I use a term like voicing. One day, everybody would probably understand that. But what was he saying on that tune right there? And and just hearing the phrasing in the song, it it is a story that was unfolding. And that that's inner Babylon, yeah. Uh, just the, I, I don't know the the other thing that I wonder about creative freedom, and, and maybe that's why uh, Nime wasn't uh, wasn't there. I I didn't look into that. I hadn't really thought much about why changing from those those particular uh, record labels uh, could be that the record label's no longer there, or um, or it got bought out. And maybe it is the same record label. I don't think Impulse was that that group, but um, one of one of the things I did do my homework on that week was the saxophone player uh, Shabaka Hutchins. When you really start, man, when I really started to dig into who he was and listening to him, and now following him on Instagram, and uh, recently just been enjoying the uh, most recent album, African Culture. Uh, that was May of 2022. Uh, very Charles Lloydish kind of took me out to fantasy land. The sounds, and I I know that uh, I I remembered reading this, but I just wanted to bring it up from Wikipedia. Basically, the the, the information says he wanted to take a step away. Uh, New Year's Day in 2023, he made a statement on Instagram page that he'd take a, a hiatus from playing the saxophone. Uh, from the end of 2023, and he later clarified his reason for doing so was citing that the physical and emotional strain that comes from performing on saxophone on tour. And and you listen to this album, and you just imagine the energy that he's put into this, and he's poured out into it. And through yeah. his saxophone, that tenor just rips, and the clarinet as well just yeah. rips. So... That energy from from that band, and then of course he also had from uh, 2012. Now I was gonna. Uh, what I was saying there is that Shabaka had put so much energy into it, and I, I I don't I don't take that for granted because I don't understand that being on pressure, being on point nonstop when it comes to that, being the front man. I could understand though from 20. When when was this? Twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. yep. You talk about ten plus years traveling and being the front man of of not only this but then the comet is coming, uh, which I really enjoyed uh, that as well. Um, and then in twenty twenty, Shabaka and the Ancestors um, on Impulse Record. I mean, he's got so much going, so much energy, and I I really that's huge. Yeah. I mean, that kind yeah. of energy day in and day out it builds an emotional pressure. Um, and I, I, I don't know that kind of pressure. I mean, I think about, I think about marching band or something else where, yeah, you're going to learn your routines and you're going to play the music and, and I'm part of a grand scheme of things. Uh, yes, if I miss a step, we may lose points in a competition, but during football season, nobody cared if I missed a step. 
Right. You're the front man pouring that energy out, and, and you're in the band pouring that energy out. I, when, when you all get a chance to listen to this album, I think you're going to hear the energy that really is being poured out, not just by him, but the drummers and the tuba players. And Matt, you've done it for the military. How much pressure do you feel? Well, I guess it depends on on the genre that you're playing. If, if I'm sitting playing concert band with the military, then there's not a lot of pressure just because you're, you know, you've got a large group of people. But if you're playing in that jazz band and there's a smaller group of people, that means theoretically more eyes are on me or, you know, the band. Um, so yeah, there, there's a, there's a considerable amount of, of pressure. And I can't imagine in a, in a group, you know, with, with four guys and, and you being the Shabaka being the leader, it's gotta be, it's gotta be hard. Uh, for me, it was always, oh my gosh, everyone's looking at me. And if I screw up, it, you know, I'm, I might as well melt into the stage. Um, I don't know that that's how I felt. Um, and that's a that's a good point that I don't think we've talked much about even on our own journey you know, being you know farther than we are how how exhausting it would be um, to be on point all of the time you know we sit and listen to an album and it's not that it's not energetic but they're in the studio they get they get a chance to stop and re-record or overdub or hey I missed that let's you know let's uh, let me do that those four bars let's do those four bars again we but uh, man when you're out on stage you don't get a chance to do that and so the yeah, the pressure would definitely be on and that's something something that we haven't talked about even in our own journey playing live uh, how different it is than 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 just being in the studio so that's a good point that i that i didn't think of drew thanks and i could i could see that being a, a bit of it um one of, the, one of the other pieces that I did did look into just because of my current journey, uh, being tied to New School Music Austin. And uh, I mentioned last week Lily's uh, involvement, her, her, her giving us this opportunity. Um, <laughs> thanks, Lily. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Lily. Uh, but I, I think back to what New School Music Austin really does, and, and they're driving at the youth. Uh, they're trying to get jazz music out there, uh, supporting underserved uh, youth in the area, and uh, not only in their weekly classes uh, that they have with the Sunday Night Jazz Ensemble and, and uh, Hope Saturdays as well, uh, and then the camps during the summertime. When Shabaka was a young youth in uh, London, it was Tomorrow's Warriors. And I think that I... Uh, that was one of the things that struck me is that in London, uh, it was co-founded by Gary Crosby and Janine Irons in 1991. Uh, and they were committed to championing uh, diversity, inclusion, and, and equality across the arts through jazz music. Uh, they wanted to focus on black musicians, female musicians, and those whose financial and other circumstances might lock them out of opportunities to pursue a career in music. A career in music is something that I <laughs> will deal with that one later. But um, when you think about what uh, Gary Crosby and, uh, and Janine were doing is promoting the jazz music in uh, that London area. And if you think about 1991, that's just our follow-up from uh, the 80s and the Loose Tubes. And mm -hmm. yeah. uh uh, and what they were doing in, in the same area. Uh, the Jazz Warriors from uh, Gary Crosby's end of things. I'm sorry, I said Jazz Warriors. Tomorrow's Warriors Tomorrow's began Warriors, yeah. with Gary Crosby, but he came from the Jazz Warriors. And so he understood the importance of getting musicians out there. He understood everything. And Shabaka was one of those that came out of Tomorrow's Warriors out of the that London, UK jazz scene. Um, some of the other people that, that we get to talk about here in the weeks to come, Courtney Pine, at that same time period, uh, some of these, many of the black musicians that, that left that area, uh, Courtney Pine, Steve Williamson, um, 
and then Crosby himself came out of that scene. And so tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's Warriors, uh, it provided a platform for young jazz musicians. Um, and I think that one of the things I heard out of Shabaka when I was looking into him is it's less about the jazz music. And I think that many of the people that came out of that group at that time wouldn't really just say, I play jazz music. We started with what kind of sounds and the, the Afro beats in there, the Caribbean sounds, the world music, uh, Comet is Coming and some of the other albums that he's done with some electronic stuff going on. There's something to be said about programs that promote that kind of music. And I think that that's one of the, one of the things that we're noticing here and there'll be a trend of it in the future when we go, how to get to this album in the top 100. Yeah. And it, it's not the biggest selling albums. It's not the most notarized albums. It were albums that shook the world. And I think that this album kind of shook the world in the fact that it opened up to a whole lot more, uh, a whole lot more music and, and a whole lot of new listeners is what I would say. Yeah. Well, and, you know, speaking of shaking the world, uh, how do you feel about it being number 99 on the list? And, and of course, we're, uh, again, we're on a little farther down in our journey. In, well, in halfway through the top 100, I don't know. Here, here's what I would say. What y'all are going to have to do is come back to this halfway through the magazine and ask yourself, where should it have landed on the top 100 list? Yeah. I, I think for anybody uh, to be able to look through that, they'll make that choice. What What about you? How do you feel well, about it being 99? Well, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, number 100 was Loose Tubes, um, which is kind of um, not standard jazz. When, when, when I think of jazz, I think of, you know, the standards and I think of, uh, who comes to my mind? Of course, Pat Metheny comes to my mind. He's he's my yeah. he's my favorite jazz musician. But Coltrane, you know, Davis, those those names all come to my mind when I think of the word jazz and um, loose tubes and 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 of course Sons of Kemet wouldn't be on on my first choice. But I'm glad they're on the list because again, it does expand my musical listening for jazz and so i i think it's pretty spot on being number 99 i'm just going through the the 1999 list and the 2000 list and i um i don't see and that's them. a that's a good note we mentioned that uh, last week in passing but mm -hmm. uh if you've got the publication uh you'll see in the back of it in 1999 they did a quick list 2006 Jazzwise did a uh, insert but do you yeah. I, they're not even on those lists yeah, it wouldn't be on the list because obviously they came out in 20 2013 this album so yeah. so i think um I, I i think they're probably pretty spot on being number 99 man that um, means we've got 98 albums better than this one <laughs> right <laughs> we're, we're in for a ride that's for sure aren't we we are in for a ride uh, and hey, oh. don't 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 get us wrong. We're going to do an album a week. That means a hundred weeks. When you start putting that together, and you're you're thinking, man, am I going to subscribe to their channel and and listen to these guys for a hundred weeks, almost two years? Well, I hope we put out some informative content, and I hope you know that you are able to, and willing to follow along with us in our journey. Um, I know we, we ramble sometimes, and uh, and and. You know, but man, th stick with us, please, because we've got some we've got some great music coming up. I can promise you. And oh, yeah. Some stuff that you're not going to want to miss, whether you're a longtime jazz listener or whether you're on the beginning of your journey like we are. Um, you know, this this has been the, the fun part for me is expanding my musical listening um, to, to to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And so I think you know, Sons of Kemet really, really did that for me this week is just kind of pushed me on the edge of, of showing me what I like and what I don't like. So stick with us on your journey. We're on a journey of our own, of course. And, and you know, that's the, the important part is and 
please feel free to leave comments. If you think this should be number one on the list, let us know. Hey, you know, I think Sons of Kemet is great. Um, but yeah, don't don't feel bad about leaving us comments because you're on your journey just like we're on our journey, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, so um, you want to rate them? Did you, did you come up with a rating? For, I, uh, I, I, I think I'm ready to. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> mostly. I think that each week we'll look back and go, huh, what was I... What was I doing? I think we rated them the way we felt the days that we did it. Yeah. Um, and just like I'm going to say, um, pass the potatoes, please. I'm going to say that I went ahead and threw an 8.5 out on it. Okay. I think that's what I have written down here. I can't find it. Actually, on on the the the, the Google spreadsheet oh. list, you you've got an eight. Eight. That's it. Yep. Yep. There and, it is. And and I I added my score this morning to the list. And I'm going to go seven and a half, seven point five. Um, okay. It was a it was a fun album. Um, you know, here here's the way I look at it. Anything above five that we rate, I think we're going to come back to in the future and and put on again and listen to again. So, I think for me a seven and a half. Hey, if I hear it come up on my shuffle list, I'm not going to skip it, right? <laughs> I'm not going to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that's interesting, your shuffle list. So I've put together music so I could listen to it on random. I think we did that at, what, album 60 or something like that when we did a uh, uh, one-week break. Uh, we just wanted to listen to some of those that we had rated less than seven. Uh, maybe we missed something or others, but I still do it today. I'll drop, drop in the car and get the USB thumb drive playing uh, and just listen to what did I miss? Um, and can I, can I tell you who it is playing? Um, somebody we've never listened to is Charles Mingus. Uh, and occasionally my YouTube channel or the, the uh, music that I'm listening to comes to an end and there's several songs that come on and my ears perk up. I ought to listen to that more often. That's Charles Mingus. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that I wouldn't have known that prior to this. I wouldn't have known of Sons of Kemet or the comet is coming or Shabaka for the most part never would have, but I, if it comes on, I would probably go ahead and find the album so I can just right. listen to it. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of impact to me that, that it had. It shook my world. Yeah. This album really did. Yeah. You're, uh, you're a Shabaka fan, you know, <laughs> throughout our conversations, his name comes up a lot from, from you and there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. I mean, it's 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 fun, you know, <laughs> because you you do you talk about him quite a bit, and, and I think it's interesting. Not that I that I don't like him, but I'm glad that you found, yeah. um, you know, Sons of Kim. Well, you, you notice you notice I drop one of those names in for you as well. I had to mention him. <laughs> He's coming <laughs> up. Brother. Yeah, and and I think that'll be an interesting one. It's not this week coming up, no, uh, no, no. but it is just around the corner. Um, the I uh, part uh, just so I didn't mean to interrupt, but part of the reason that, that I like this so much is the uh, um, if if I can know who it is coming on the radio or coming on um, the repeatability, the the mm. uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of the recognizability. recognizability. Yeah, the recognizability. And I think that Sons of Kemet, because of their structure, the way they're structured, you're going to know who they are. You know, you put that list on shuffle. Um, you're going to know who they are. Oh yeah, that's Sons of Kemet, no doubt. Yep. Right. You you will know. Oh, you'll know. Uh, their yeah. tuba players will remind you of who they are. <laughs> um, and I and that's the cool part to me is recognizability. Uh, yeah. Shabaka plays. I'm going to kind of figure that out. For yeah. you, you're going to know that sound of the bass clarinet from uh, Courtney Pine. I mean, that's just going to stand out, and I think that's. Yeah. That's the exciting part. Uh, this week's album, number 99, Sons of Kemet, Sons Burn. Of Kemet. Yeah. Uh, get a chance, listen to this one, but but listen to the other five albums I think they've got, the other three albums they've uh, got. Yeah, three. Uh, yep. Least We Forget in 2015, 2018. Uh, Your Queen is a Reptile. And then 2021, <laughs> Black to the Black Future. To the future. Yeah. Uh, and those, man, all of the albums. You'll know who they are when you listen to them. Uh, don't get confused with the common is coming. 
Uh, that's another Shabaka group. Uh, he actually goes by a different name under that. Uh, it's like King King Shabaka or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you'll you'll know that that's them as well. So I mean, I think that uh, when you do get a chance to listen, uh, enjoy it, and come back and and talk to us about it. Drop some comments. Drop some emails and tell us you guys are nuts. Uh, you've wasted <laughs> forty five minutes of my life, and you you never gave me any real information. Well, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you, did. I give I gave you information. Listen to Shabaka. <laughs> yes, that, that's yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. So, all right. So let's uh, kind of oh. introduce next week's artist. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get giddy. Yeah, I get giddy. Me too. Me too. Oh. Number ninety-eight. <laughs> number ninety-eight on our list. Uh, is brace, someone, brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, brace yourself. Yes, is, is someone, and I, I distinctly remember um, this week in particular uh, oh, when man. we did this album. Um, I was driving to an office of mine that was two and a half, three hours away from, from my home office. And so I had a chance to put this on and, and literally just listen to it the whole way home. This, this is a double album. Uh, number 98 is what you, you want to do it or you want me to do it? Uh, I, I'll let you, I might get teary eyed. Yeah, I, I know me too. <laughs> number 98, we got Kamazi Washington. And the name of the album is called The Epic. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm here to tell you, this album is epic. This this conversation next week is going to be um, a lot different on the journey that we're on farther down the road. But um, I, I'll tell you what, this, this, this one has made an impact. So yeah. next week's conversation about Kamazi Washington. Please, if you get a chance, listen to Kamazi's work. Yeah. Um, the the album that we'll be talking about next week is called The Epic. Mm. Um, it is mm. a double. Mm. It is a double, a double doozy, right? It's you know what, man. It's funny to me because I we listen to it on Digital World. I, I don't have the equipment to get a record player and sit down and put the good earbuds on and sit in my uh, my fancy chair with my feet up. So it's always digital. It's always go go go. But I was in the record store shortly after this week, and I saw the LP there and the box set of it. And I thought, man, <laughs> for 80 bucks, I'll buy it. And then it's going to cost me $1,000 to listen to it because I'm going to buy the best record player I can afford. I would own all of the equipment to sit and listen to this album on a, on a record because I, I do think that there are record fans out there uh, for all of y'all that that hate us for doing digital music, I appreciate it. There is something nice about a record as long as it's clean and pristine. But when I yeah. saw it, I was like, "This is the first one I want to own. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna break the bank to get a record player so I can listen to it." But I would own it, uh, and I and I do own it, CD and digital. But this this album, oh man, yeah. So I, I guess what we should say is let me let me back up. Right now, we would be saying, I don't know anything about this. True. We've turned the page. We see that it's Kamazi. Yeah. Uh, we look at it and go, it's epic. He's got some crazy hair in a picture in the magazine. Uh, I'll probably bring that up uh, later, so look for it right here. Um, but, man, I yeah, I have to say this before the week, week passes and we, we come back to talk about it. It's weird to me that in my notebook... Um, and I keep physical, I handwrite everything out, my thoughts. He takes up five lines. There are other bands like Shabaka last week that got a whole page. There are mm-hmm. some that get three pages or four pages of notes because there's stuff that I catch. He's got one, I'm sorry, two lines. Number 98, Kamazi, the epic. And the only note I have with it, it sure was. Yeah. I, I don't know any other notes outside of that, so I hope you've got some. But this week, I, I'm going to go back and just appreciate his sounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a that's a good word. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, we'll, we'll listen, give, the, give the album a listen. Let us know what you think. Um, join us next week um, for, for episode number three, or we're going backwards, episode number 98. 
yeah. uh, of the top 100 albums that shook the world. Absolutely. All right. Like, subscribe, do all yeah, the like, other subscribe. fancy stuff above, below. Head over to the unconnoisseur.com website. We'll have more notes. I'll have all the links that we use today. Of course, we're going to put them in the in the video link as well, and I'll have them on the unconnoisseur.com website um, with our scores and every kind of all the links that we talked about with Shabaka and uh, and the comment is coming. Loose Tubes is still up there. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to the Loose Tube album, um, the, the Delightful Precipice from last week, head over to the unconnoisseur.com, give that a listen. And uh, yeah, enjoy your week in jazz. Cheers, everybody. We'll Cheers. see you in the comments below.